permutations and combinations. Permutations require order. We did those with the cases like um, two boys couldn't fit together or had to be a three digit number greater than 300 from the If order matters. In combinations, it doesn't. So all three letter combinations, P, Q, R, and F. So what it's saying is that P, Q, R is they counted as the same thing as P, R, Q. They're just saying those three letters together. All right. The number of combinations N in different objects are, we were talking about that N being, N being the whole number. So N being your total and R being what you choose from that total. So what do we know about our N? It has to be what in respect to R? Greater than or equal to, right? I can't have a total of three things and choose eight of them, right? You can't do that. Um, so here's the combination for now. This will be on your formula sheet, same with the permutations one. These ones will be on it. But you have to slow down and make sure you copy the formula correctly. Take a note for your grade 11 book. When you guys got the quadratic formula, like in grade, you were super excited about it, and then you copied it down wrong and your answer was wrong. So stop and actually like look at the formula. So why does R have to be greater than zero? Can't choose nothing, you can't choose negative numbers, right? You can't show me what negative two apples looks like. Um, okay, so now a little bit different. This formula is the exact same as the permutation, except you're multiplying by R factorial on the denominator. If we didn't have that, that's the permutation formula. So eight choose two, right? Um, and we had pick. Two, so the P choose, I don't know, I don't know if that's going to be or not. So there are 12 females, 18 males in a grade 12 class. The principal wants to meet with a group of five students. How many selections are possible? So it's given us no restrictions. It, keep, it says nothing about the ratio of male to female, it doesn't say anything about that. It just says you want to meet with students. So how many students do I have? 30. So my n is going to be 30. How many am I choosing? He wants to, he wants to meet with five students. So it would be this. And so I would have 30 factorial over 30 minus 5 factorial times 5 factorial. Now again, I would suggest that you simplify it first. This obviously would be a calculated question, even with it simplified, it's kind of big. So I'm going to have 30 times 29 times 28 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorial all over 25 factorial, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So those cancel each other out. Uh, 5 goes into 36 times, uh, 4 goes into 28, 7 times, 3 goes into 27, 9 times, 2 goes into 26, 13 times. So I get rid of all my denominators. So I'm going to multiply 6 by 29 by 7 by 9 by 13. I'm going to get... 142,000. All right. So now we place some restrictions on it. So remember we were talking about probability? No, we were expecting. More important than us. No one. No, it's just the story. We lost two lessons. Um, if I wanted to know what the probability of rolling a six on a dice and flipping a head on a coin, how would I figure that out? You did this before. What's the probability of flipping a head? 50 50 or one over two, right? What's the probability of rolling a six? 
one over six. So what's the probability of those two things happening together? One over 12. So what did you do mathematically speaking? Multiply them. Because they both had to happen at the same time to make the event work. So in this situation, the group must consist of two females and three males. You're going to do two different combinations. So let's do the combination for females. I know we're going to pick two of them, or I have to choose two of them. And how many females do I have in total? And that's going to be happening at the same time. I have 18 males, and I have to choose three of them. They're happening at the same time. So those events have to be multiplied together. Exactly like we did in like grade, I don't know, when we did that, grade nine, grade eight, something like that. You're doing the exact same thing, just a little bit more complicated. Because you want them both to happen at the same time. So I'm also I'm going to have twelve factorial over twelve minus two factorial times two factorial multiplied by eighteen factorial over eighteen minus Three factorial, three factorial. Are you excited for that? Excited? Oh, I can do this one. That's sixty six. Got that one. Um, ooh, I'm all over the place. I got the total, but I don't have That's how many possible combinations there are of groups of five with the restriction two females, three males. So the key thing here is to remember that you're going to multiply them together. All right. One of the females is named Brooklyn. How many five member groups will consist of Brooklyn, two females, and two males? So now, how many combinations do I have? I have three. I have Brooklyn, then I have the female, and then I have the male. So what's the combination of Brooklyn? How many Brooklyns do I have? How many? One. And how many Brooklyns am I choosing? One. So that's Brooklyn. Now let's go on to the two females. So what's that going to look like? I had 12. Now I'm down to 11 because one female has already been taken out. Right? So I'm dealing with 11 females and I'm choosing two of them. What about the guys? Still 18. What's this going to be? What? There's only one combination of choosing Brooklyn if there's only one Brooklyn. It's going to be one. Uh, this one will be uh, 11 factorial over 2 factorial times 2 factorial. Root 18 factorial over 18 minus 2 factorial. 
I don't need the numbers from before. This is disappointing. These are all different now. Well, what did you think we're doing yesterday? There's nothing to be angry about. Eleven times nine factorial over nine factorial one. Not good with my 17 sign symbols. Okay, you good with that? So we should make sense of the more restrictions you put on it, the less possible combinations there will be. Does that make sense? Like, it's fine if we're choosing from everybody and it doesn't matter who we pick because you're going to test the combinations. But as soon as you start putting restrictions, like Brooklyn needs to be in the group for sure, and then you got some restrictions with male and female, we're going to get smaller and smaller numbers. All right, so here's the card that you don't like. Yeah? And? Because maybe they just don't the same way I do. Right, but you can't make the assumption that everybody knows. Because not, there are certain religions that the ones who play with they start. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, um, Hutterites and things like that, they don't play with regular space cards, like a deck of cards like we do. I'm not sure the reason why. Yeah. I, do, I really have nothing to say at this point. We've got two lessons left. Perfect. Okay. So, 52 cards. So things you need to know about a deck of cards. There's 52 of them. How many suits are in a deck? Four suits. So we have cards, and we have diamonds, no bullets like it. And then we have clubs. This is probably the best round of everybody gets to me. And we have spades. These two are red, these two are black. So guns and hearts are red. Spades and clubs are black. They will explain this to you. You will find that on no provincial exam will there be with a deck of cards. It's just too hard to explain it to people who don't know anything about this. But we're still going to practice with it because it's something we're all familiar with. So 52 cards in a deck. There's four suits. What else do you know? And there's 13 cards per suit. Okay. Count. Same, clean, jack. Okay. There's 10, 8 to 10, 10 plus all the base cards. All right, we're good with that. That's all you need to know about cards. If you've never played cards before, you should probably start. Um, okay, so it says I want to have five cards dealt to me if there's no restriction. No restriction. I'm dealing a deck of cards. You're the first man, and I'm dealing you five right off the top. So we got 52. Choose five. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
So if you're in fact in cold environment and they're playing single deck and you're dealt five cards, your chances of you getting all the cards you want, or getting perfect cards is like two and a half million. Yeah. Yeah. If the hand consists of spades only. If you were two on time, somebody on the mode is a plus or time. Time. Let me see if No, how many spades do I have to choose from? So 13. You don't need to do, you don't need to do like the spades only. It's not saying that you're picking from the rest of the deck. You're doing too many things at once. You're getting too complicated. So there are 1,287 possible hands that you can make from just the face. There are 2.5 million or 2.6 million hands that you can make from an entire deck. Do you understand the difference? Yes? Um, so the hand consists only of black cards. So, how many cards am I choosing from? 26. Because then it's two suits that are black, and each suit has 13 in them. So, do you anticipate which number to be bigger? This one or this one? Oh, so this one half half. Because you got more cards to play, right? How come I'm asking silly questions like that? Because that's me being a little bit crazy. I'm trying to give you guys points of reference so when you get a number that if you got this one and you got less than 1200, you have a problem. You have more cards to make more combinations of. Okay, you need to get four of a kind here. Okay, you need four of a kind and a hand of five. How many sets of four cards would I have? There's one in the test here. 13 is the right answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat four, four of a kind as one thing. Because I want sets, right? So I'm going to have 13 sets of four, and I'm only going to choose one of those stats. And then I have to pick my fifth card. Does that matter what the fifth card is? No, because I just want to I just want to add four of a kind. So how many cards do I have left? 48. And how many of those do I want to choose? One. So this counts as four cards because it's one set of four. And this counts as a single card. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um. So that's going to give me 600 
and 24 possible nouns. Easy peasy. Could you guys have done that? No. I can see things. I'm sorry. I, like, I think as a teacher, we have to show you that you need to be open to all these things, but I really have really poor time in that. I don't like this in there. But I feel like I forced on you that chapter six was awesome, and it didn't work. So I'm hoping that my negative opinion about this doesn't work either. Um, and how many ways can you use? Can a committee of five be chosen from ten conservatives and seven of liberal if there must be three conservatives on? This one's easy. You can do this. It's like a boy girl group of five. Really? I'm sending you back. Can't graduate. Thank you, what do I do? 10 C3, 10 C3, and what has to happen at the same time? So multiply by 7 choose 2. They have to add up to 5. Um, the way this is written, there must be three conservatives on it. That's fine, I don't know number. We'll say at least three conservatives if you want to go over that. So don't worry, we're getting there on the easy one. Good time. Um, this is going to be 10 factorial, 7 factorial, 3 factorial, multiplied by 7 factorial, 5 factorial. Two factorial. Does everybody know where I'm getting the seven and the five from? Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure because I decided that step. I am ready. It's in the formula for a little. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The problem says to do on Friday. A school has 12 teachers, five secretaries, eight custodians, 15 students. How I think it's supposed to say how many committees of four teachers, three custodians, two secretaries, and five students are possible? Eight hundred and thirty-two thousand four hundred and thirty-one. Sorry, eight hundred and thirty-two million four hundred and thirty-one thousand six hundred. Seven seventy-two. Okay, so let's start with teachers. So that's going to be 12 choose 4 multiplied by, we're going to go to secretaries next, so 5 choose 2, and then we're going to go custodians next, so that's going to be 8 choose 3, and what do I have? Students? 15 choose Oh, five. <laughs> so if you do all that math, then you're all excited to do that. You get a big number. A small number you get. All right, Matthew, page three. Uh, I'm going to put a copy of them today because I feel like I'm not going to get any more. I know. So I as I get them, as I get them, I will put a copy of them, but I'll give you what I got. Matthew, this is your question. 
So a housing based three committee of seven be chosen from 10 women and eight men if the women must be in the majority. So this is where we're going to go back to equity, right? Those things. So we're going to end up with cases. So it just says the women have to be in the majority. All right. All right. Case number one. Give me a scenario where women are in the majority. Four women and three men. Okay, so four women, three men. So what would that look like? So ten C four times by eight C three. What's case two? Five and three. Five women, two men, so that's going to be ten choose five times by eight choose two. Bigger or smaller numbers? Okay, what would be my next case? Six and one. It didn't give us any minimum for men being on this committee. It just said women had to be in the majority. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Do you guys pick the number to be larger or smaller? Smaller. Okay, last case. All women. Bigger or smaller? Okay, so what do I do when I have cases? Uh, so that would go to be 20,616 possible committees. We really be pay attention to the language that they're using. So if they say things like at least three women or at least two janitors on the committee or whatever, that means they're going to have to go into a case situation. Okay, a committee of four is to be selected for four girls, five boys. How many ways can the committee be made if? There's at least one girl on the committee. Do the do the total? So what would be the total? That would mean that there's no restrictions. One twenty six. Oh, I'm just looking for the combination right now. We've got nine choose four, no restrictions on that. Um, what would it be for the combination for no girls? So it would be five choose four. How come five choose four? Because it's the five boys, and the five boys would take up the four spots on the committee. Um, I just did the math, and I got 121. What did you get? 126? Minus five. So 121 would be your answer. 
Well, another committee must be more girls than boys on this committee. Great. So we have two cases. We've got case one where there would be three girls, one boy, and case two where it would be four girls, no boys. Because it says that there must be more girls than boys. Two and two is equal amount. That's not more girls, but the same amount. So there's only two cases in this situation. So this would be how many girls might have to start with? Four. So four choose three, multiplied by five choose one. And this one would be four choose four. Um, so this would give me this one's one, this one's twenty. What do I do to these two? Uh, easy peasy, right? When we're going through it, it's really easy. But honestly, guys, if you're not practicing this, like if you're not actually doing the assignments, it's going to be a pain in the butt. So this one's going to be n factorial over n minus 3 factorial, 3 factorial, all over n minus 1 factorial, um, n minus 4 factorial, 3 factorial. It is. So the way I would deal with this is I would look at it numerator denominator. I simplify the numerator and then I simplify the denominator because really all this is saying is n factorial over n minus 3 factorial, 3 factorial divided by And do we divide fractions? No, we multiply by the reciprocal. So I would simplify these. I would simplify them two plus two different things. Um, so let's look at the numerator in red. This is going to be n times n minus one times n minus two times n minus three factorial over n minus three factorial, three factorial. Those will cancel each other. You guys good with that? So this is going to be n, n minus one, n minus two over six. So this one, when I simplify it, my first one's n minus one, n minus two, n minus three, n minus four factorial over n minus four factorial. These are kind of the things that will be on the provincial exam. I think there's one like this on your practice exam. And if I were to look at January of this year, I think there was one similar to this on there as well. So this one you can anticipate being on a test and being on your exam. 
Okay, good. So what is it that they simplified the numerator? They simplified the denominator. We know that we multiply by reciprocal. We do not divide. Notice that I haven't multiplied anything through because it's way easier to cancel stuff out. So what if we cancel each other out? Six, gone. What else? N minus one. N minus two. So what am I left with? It's not harder than one, but if you leave it like this, this looks impossible to do. This isn't, none of this was hard. If you remember how to expand, maybe, maybe not. Okay, so this says solve for n if 2 times n choose 2 is equal to n plus 1 choose 3. So let's do some math. I don't know if I did do math. So 2 times by n factorial over n minus 2 factorial, 2 factorial equals n plus 1 factorial over n 3 factorial. Oh no, that's not my intent. It's supposed to be minus three. Um, sorry. Get rid of that whole denominator. Let's try this again. Uh, so n minus one minus n plus one minus three is n minus two factorial. Two factorial. Okay, I got it now. So what are we gonna do? How do we expand first before we count this stuff out? I think that's what you meant. So 2 times n, I'm just going to put this in a big bracket, n minus 1, n minus 2 factorial, all over n minus 2 factorial over 2. Huh. I'm just going to keep going down here. Uh, so we are going to cancel this, cancel this, cancel that, cancel that, and I'm left with n times n minus 1. Yeah. Okay, moving on to the other side. So on the other side of the equal sign, I'm going to expand. So this is going to be n plus 1 times n n minus 1, n minus 2 factorial, n minus 2 factorial, 3 factorial, those cancel each other out. Um, so that's going to equal n plus 1, n, n minus 1, all over 6. Suggestions? Okay. Any other suggestions? Solve for n. Solve it. How do you suggest they do that? Cross multiply. <laughs> okay. Little piece of the math teacher dies when you say things like cross multiply. We're so fickle as math teachers. We have very specific needs and we start foiling or cross multiplying, it breaks our heart. I can divide this side by n and minus one. If I do it to this side, I have to do it to this side. 
those are going to cancel each other out. I'm left with six on this side and n plus one. Okay, dokie. Um, I think we'll skip forward a couple of my here and then I'll go over that tomorrow.